Hello world, this is Edward Bevilacqua, the publisher of Ciao Tutti, Vice President of the Italian American Club here in Las Vegas, the most vibrant club. And uh, we got very lucky today that Dr. Michael Crovetti had time to uh, chat with us. Thank you, doctor. Thanks for coming in. Thank, or, you. thank you for letting me yeah. come into your very well. uh, fantastic yeah. place that you have here. Thank you. Happy Friday. Thank you. And so, <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to be back next week. Doctor here for Dr. Balduni. Oh, is that right? My part? Yeah, I'll talk about Italian roots. There you go. So, well, since you brought it up, what are your Italian roots? Jeez, my Italian roots. It's funny, I'm fourth generation. Okay. So, even in speaking to my father, uh, who's obviously third generation, uh -huh. we're talking about, you know, where we came from. And some of it's kind of blurry, actually. Okay. You know, we, sure. even when we look back to Well, for some reason, the roots. some people intentionally it's blurry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Ours is not intentionally blurry, but it, it's blurry just from the way it was passed down. I'm sure. My, my grandpa, my grandpa was a super simple guy. Okay. And uh, he had a little market on uh, Fourth and South in South Philadelphia. Okay. Is so, that where you grew up? I grew up in uh, well, we started, if you can believe this, in Camden, New Jersey. Okay. Now I'm now, from I'm from California, so okay, everything so, east of the Mississippi is like. I, it's hard for me to understand. Yeah, so growing up, uh, Las Vegas was like Europe to okay. me, right? Okay. So sure. I think I made it past uh, Ohio when I was like 22. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, and now I live here, right? Yeah. So I, it's, this all, in fact, I still go to California, mm -hmm. and I still think it's Europe. I, I mean, <laughs> somebody could tell me, oh, we're going up to San Jose, and I'm like, oh, boy, better get that map out. Where's San? <laughs> you know, and I've lived here yeah. almost 20 years, right? And I, okay. and I just... I still get confused on Santa Barbara versus San Diego sometimes. So I feel not I feel smart. good. Yeah, you I feel should good. feel good. Okay. So Camden was a little town right across the river from uh, Philadelphia. And that's a historic town, right? The well, Revolutionary War, or no? No, no. I, I don't know the answer. To that. Okay. I but I can tell you that it was. Uh, it became one of the roughest towns in the country. Uh, okay. Rougher than Oakland. Rougher. So it was Oakland. number one. Number one. Okay. The crime. So at five, we had to kind of move out of there. Okay, got it. And move out of there. And is it, I'll tell you a quick story. I told you I'm full of stories, right? Yeah. So I'll tell you a story. Yeah. So I just operated on a patient. I did both of his hip replacements. Okay. So he saw on one of my screens that I was from uh, Cherry Hill. Okay. He says, so i Cherry Hill. Yeah, he's, yeah, so that's where we went from Kenya. Okay. He says, so am I. And I said, no way. Where'd you go to high school? Yeah, of course. First thing he <laughs> said, right? East or West? Because it's too. Okay. Are you East or West? Right, so they're kind of checking out like her friend or foe. Right, exactly. Okay. So, and, and he's a little bit older than me. And I said, well, actually, I was born in Canada. He goes, so was I. This is three weeks ago. Yeah. He says, so was I. And I said, well, what street did you live on? He said, Lee Avenue. I go, no way. <laughs> so get a load of this. 50, well, let me see, 40 years later. Okay. He, his mom still lives there. Mm. She's 90. Two houses from the house I grew up in. Wow. And I just did his hip replacements here. I had no idea. You didn't, didn't know the family? Didn't know the family. Didn't. Wow. I was fine. Oh, gosh, right. So we right. so went right. over to Cherry Hill, okay. where uh, I, that's where I grew up, grew up in this little house. Uh, what is Cherry Hill famous for? Just nice sounding name? Well, no, the Cherry Hill Mall. Okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, the Cherry Hill Mall was what it was, what it was famous I for. I see, okay. It was a famous shopping mall it, when malls were even around. Okay. On the East Coast. So this is before like the Mall of America. Right. This is before malls. Yeah. Okay. The Cherry Hill Mall. People would come from all over. Oh, I see. To go oh. to the Cherry Hill Mall. Okay. And then you remember um, the Garden State Racetrack was a was a big horse racing track that was very famous on the East Coast. I see. It was called the Garden State Racetrack. And that was New uh, Jersey's the Garden State. Correct. For us people who correct. aren't really clear. Okay. Correct. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So the Garden State Racetrack was very famous. And, Cherry people came from all over. Okay. So. Now, do you know what part of Italy, north or south, your family came from? Uh, Genoa. Okay. Yeah. Up okay. Northern. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I keep saying, you know, you're right there, the south of France. Yeah. You got Monaco yeah. to the west. Yeah. And uh, my wife and I were about to have our uh, 25th anniversary. Okay. So we actually have a little place in the coast there. We really? can't wait. We, and I'm, I've been to Rome, uh -huh. but I've never been to that part of okay. Italy. I have a picture from my aunt who was over there. Uh, cool. It's the Piazza. It's interesting. It's the Piazza dei Corvetto. Not even oh. an I. Huh. So interesting. where it gets blurry is how did Corvetto become Crovetti here in the States? So I'm in Chicago. I'm in Chicago three years ago, four years ago. Okay. 
and I go to dinner, yeah. and I put a table in with the hostess, okay. and I tell her, I said, uh, six for Crivetti. She goes, that's my last name. <laughs> and, I, and I said, and very flippantly, I said, uh, we're related. Uh -huh. She's like, what are you? How okay, do you know? okay, creeper. Like, yeah, right. What are you talking about? We're related. I said, no, we're related. And I explained to her the story of how it started out Crovetto, became, and then our, our family arms are Crovetto, and then ah. became Crovetti when we uh, uh, somewhere in Ellis Island. Oh, this this there's happened. A, right. Sure, or something. sure enough, uh, my father and her mother were related. Wow. So and it, wow. It, that's the neat thing that anybody in the states with Crovetti is somehow. Related because of the change. Sure, it's kind of neat. Yeah, that is very. Yeah. So that's a good way to know. Now, speaking of that, um, where your family is from, do you, have you ever been to Gina's Bistro here? No. It's on Flamingo. Okay. It's near the freeway on, you know, on the west side. Okay. Oh, way out. Okay. Yeah. The owner is a 24-year-old kid who's from Genoa. Okay. And uh, he came over here to open this restaurant. His dad is, he's fifth generation restaurateur. Wow. So you should try it. And it's called Gina's? Gina's Bistro. Uh, I'll make sure to send you the done. information. Yeah, done. That's done. But he's I love that. He's a great stuff. young guy, you know, left Italy three years ago. Wow. His family said, time to fly. And he has great, his dad's restaurant in uh, Genoa is um, a five-star Michelin three-star or something. So. You know, we were in uh, last time I was in South Philly. I was telling you about my buddy Larry DeChico, yeah. right? and then uh, so we're over in, in, in Jersey, and we go over for dinner over to South Philly, and it was so epic because you know we took a car over, okay. right? So because uh, we're going to have a little red wine, you can't go to South Philly and have a little red wine. Okay. So we took a car, and then we had to go down this. Alley. Taking a car means you have to drive. Yeah, we have to drive. Yeah. So because you don't want to get right. Up. Right, right. So it's best to go over the bridge, right? You know, just, just be safe first, yeah. right? So we're going down this alley, and we had to pull the the mirrors in, <laughs> and we're on the curb. And I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> this is just yeah. awesome. We're going down. We go in, speaking of restaurant tours, so the whole family, same thing. They just came from there three, four years ago. We double park, of course. Uh -huh. we, we walk into the – I got to tell you, the first time I brought my wife to – Philly, because you'll love this, the, the Texas girl landing in South Philly. Oh, I had a heart attack. But, so from this coast town. So we're going to dinner, and the sons, of course, dad's behind. Sure. The, the, he's cooking. Yeah. The sons are the waiters. Yeah. Mom's in, in the back. She's probably doing the books. You, right. know, you know how it goes, yeah, yeah. right? So She's running the flights. We, we sit down, and you know we think we have. That's why I want to go to Gina's because we think we have this neat, authentic Italian. They bring out a Caesar salad, hot, huh. a hot Caesar with balsamic vinaigrette, Parmesan cheese. So they bring everybody's food. And, of course, we had some nokis yeah. and yeah. we were doing the courses. Sure. And they put it down, and, like, all the kids are, are standing around. And I'm going, and I'm talking to Larry, and our wives are there. And I said, what, 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 what's, what's happening? Huh? Let's eat, okay? Everybody, let's eat. So we wait for the ladies to eat, of course, and they yeah. take a bite. And, we take a bite, and I go, and I go, oh, this is so good. The boys, mom, dad, dad, they love it. They stand there waiting for you to take a bite to make sure you love it. And the whole restaurant's yelling. It was amazing. Now, is going from New Jersey to Philadelphia like going from Summerlin to Henderson? Just over a bridge is the difference, right? Really? Yeah, yeah, literally over a bridge. I mean, okay. South Philly. You, you can see 20 it. minutes. Yeah, you okay. can, literally, it's 20 okay. minutes from where the house was okay. in Jersey. Cherry Hill's right on the, the border. Okay. okay. So you're talking the Delaware River. Uh -huh. Little little jump, especially in the South Philly. It's okay. real simple. Yeah, okay. Like and now, what did your dad do? So my pop, jeez, what did my dad do? So my dad, my dad was a laborer in a construction company. Okay, what kind of, what uh, kind of construction? We paved roads. Okay, all and right. So much because it, it's our claim to fame that the, I, whenever we drive on a road in New Jersey, Dad and I paved it because I, ah. I ran the back of the paver for years. Really? Oh, every okay. summer. Growing up? Yeah, every summer so I ran the Starting at what age? Let's see, I was a lifeguard at the Jersey Shore, which was a whole okay. other story, right? And then um, uh, until I was 18, then from 18 all the way through college, so maybe four years, five okay. years, I ran the board on this paper. It was really fun. Ah, yeah. Was it hard work? Yeah. 
I mean, you're talking on top of that paper is 140 degrees. Oh, okay. You know, if you're way up on top, you're running it. You're 160 degrees. <laughs> so, and, and you're, you know, you know, you back east, even like this, it's yeah, humid. Right. But I was playing football in college, ah. so I needed to kind of rip up and be, you know, so you seriously in good shape. Right. So when we got to football camp in August, I was laughing. I'm like, really? Yeah. You guys think this is hot? Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, we might be carrying 25 pounds of pads and everything else, but stand on top of a paver for eight hours, yeah. you know, out at uh, an Air Force base, paving runways. Yeah, this is nothing. This is a breeze. And that makes Bikram yoga look like nothing. You're right. No, I mean, you're not wow. kidding. So, yes, my pop was a laborer and a uh, big union uh, guy. Okay. Uh, we were both uh, 172 heavy and general okay. back, in the, back in the day, right? And then uh, he became a uh, foreman, you know, wow. but he never put a shuttle down because okay. he's just my dad. Yeah, I left at 4.30 in the morning, came over to you know, he's just a hard-working guy, yeah. where I get my work ethic, yeah. right? So then he goes, uh, and my mom passed at 52, kind of suddenly, mm -hmm. so kind of through, you know, the mom and these Italian families, and she was a Polish mom, right? Okay. Polish amazing cook. Italian, Italian cook. cook? Polish okay. Italian cook. Where did she get that? From her, your grandmother? No idea. Your dad? No idea. Her, just her the sisters are made cook. Yeah. yeah. Neighborhood. Yeah, you know, nothing like walking in the house. You can smell the sauce cooking there, you know, all the time. And I'm like, Mom, aren't you Polish? Like, <laughs> really? You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, she made the most, you know, and God forbid somebody came over to eat. You know, like the table, if you could see table, there wasn't enough food on the table. Yeah. Thank goodness, used to my high school buddies were like 6'3", wow. 220. What, what position did you play? I was a quarterback. Oh, that's right. I read that, yeah. Yeah, I was a quarterback. All the way through college, All the right? way through, yeah. All the way to the end, so it was pretty cool. And were you thinking about going pro? So interesting you say that, right? So well, I, I want to go back to the Polish food for the Polish, the, Italian, the table full of food. Did your mother also do Polish traditional very, Polish food? Very little. Okay, isn't that strange? Very little and very Polish. Uh, Olszewski was the last name. Okay. Very, very Polish. Very little Polish. So she just got absorbed in, absorbed into the Italian. Just, okay. you know, just hilarious. And did you guys have Sunday dinners? We did. We had it, it, interesting. Yes, every, but we had dinner every night. It wasn't like. But I mean, it was was it different on Sunday? Like it was, a, you know, three thirty minutes. As Larry Rubo said, it takes thirty minutes to eat, and three hours later, you're still sitting there talking. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. And, and well, you know, if there's a football game on, see, we had dinner on Sundays. We had dinner in front of the TV, which is weird because the this little family room, the house I grew up in, was seventeen hundred square feet. Okay. You know. Three sides of this. Right, three bedrooms, one one bathroom. Oh, five wow. of us. <laughs> right. Can you, can you imagine? I mean, and so fortunately, it was all boys except for my mom, who somehow we encouraged her to act like a boy sometimes. So yeah. she at least, but it was hilarious, right? You, you know, you got somebody now the, the, in the bathrooms as big as like your car. So you, yeah. so you got somebody in the shower. You got somebody. How many bedrooms? Two, three, three. three. Okay. Okay. Hilarious. You so know. the, okay, so. So you started playing football at Pop Warner age 10? Pop Warner was seven. Seven. I played on the green team when I was seven. Yeah. Wow. The green team. It's my first year playing. And did your son do that, or are you more concerned now about injuries? No, you know, he did, but he, it's interesting. My son's like my middle brother. Okay. My middle brother uh, played basketball in college because he was uh, tall and thin. Okay. You know, thin, and, and now he's huge. Like now my middle brother's a big guy, yeah. right? But he didn't, that didn't happen until, like, junior year of college. Huh. Right, so my son's following the same way, and okay. all of a sudden, like in the last year, we're five inches. Wow! Like now he's five eleven, right? And but he has no shoulders. Poor little <laughs> so guy. now was that Poor little guy's like uh, exercise? What? That he grew so much? My just genetic. Brother, just genetic. Diet. That's just how he yeah. filled out. So I think my my son is about to do the same thing. He's about to fill out, but he's going to be a junior, and he goes to Bishop Grumman High School. Yeah. Oh, okay. so he, so he came to me last year in football camp. He goes, Dad, I don't think I can do this. And I said, son, what do you mean you, what do you, mean you can't do this? <laughs> Suck it up, boy. You know what I mean? Yeah. He says, no, you got to come to practice and see this. I said, okay, well, you know, Bishop Gorman's number one high school in the country. I don't Bishop, know where, Gorman, I, Bishop Gorman High School with a college campus. Honest, a great football field. Tim right? John, right? And you should see. So I go out there. He looks like a – I thought he was the water boy. I'm like, <laughs> hey, Peanut. <laughs> Peanut, come here. He, he go hit somebody. He sees like, yeah, I'm trying to hit somebody. They every time they touch me, I just they're I'm killing fine. me out here. So finally, he goes to my wife and he's like, Listen, I, I, I can't. I, I, Dad, I'm getting killed out here. Is it okay if I go play golf? And I said, Well, sure. We live on a golf course. Go play golf. 
And what's really cool about it is now he's not hurt, right? He's not getting railed, and we get to play together. So it's not a so yeah. It's a great my son plays golf. He plays golf at Santa Barbara. He did last year at Santa Barbara. Wow. Uh, and but it's not a sport. I played baseball in college. Oh, did you? And but golf is not really a sport. It's pretentious guys that have their own coaches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it, uh, uh, so I played uh, high school baseball. Also, okay. right? what position? I was a right fielder and, ah, pe and okay. pitcher. Okay, yeah, same. It's all about the arm, right? You know, the yeah. quarterback, the yeah. arm. The that was in the days where you could be six foot. In the yeah, and I, not anymore. Right. and I got to the I got to the end of my senior year, and it was really funny. I had made my decision on football or baseball sure. in college. Yeah. So a guy by the name of Al Masichetti, right? Okay. I mean, nice, Another nice, nice Jewish kid, yeah. right? Al Masichetti. So he wants me to try out for the Mets. He's the Mets recruiter in South Jersey, and our team, uh, Cherry Hill, was state champs all these years. Uh -huh. And so I told my mom and tell my dad, listen, I got so. But the difference was is that football was going to pay for my college. Uh -huh. So my parents were very, very. Uh, we weren't poor, yeah. but we were you know, lower middle, hard working, hardworking, lower middle yeah. class. You know, yeah. regular, just hardworking Joes. Sure. You know, and uh, so my dad's like. They're going to pay for your college. You're, you're going. Guess where you're going. Guess where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to pay to that college. And they paid the tuition. And I, I couldn't believe it. You know, it was so and amazing. Did, when did you want to become a doctor? Yeah, yeah. So when did I want to become I'm not sure. So I went to college to actually become a doctor. Right? Oh, okay. I had no idea why. Okay. I, my, so you nobody came, in your you family, came, no. nobody in the neighborhood. No. My dad can't TV show. My dad can't come fugitive to the office or go to the hospital because the smell makes him like it. <laughs> That's <laughs> how averse my family is to medicine. So what okay. if they see blood? Oh yeah, they're down. Okay. Yeah. And what, now why do people, why does that happen with people? You know, I, I who knows, right? I mean if they faint, it's uh, it's your body's what we call your automatic nervous system. Is it? Yeah, so, so you have, so a, it's, you it's, have it's, an automatic nervous system. So for instance, you get frightened by something, right? Your heart starts to race, yeah. you start to sweat. That's your automatic nervous system. Well, the same thing happens when people see blood. That's what fainting is. Your automatic nervous system just oh, shuts just you down. Just shuts you down. Uh -huh. shuts you down yeah. And as it the same thing with vomiting, like some people see something vomit and they right. Start same deal. It's just okay. matter what your automatic system can take. Okay, so I have to do this. Um, so. You was it like you met a girl and she was pre med and you said that's what okay, I Okay, yeah. So was, <laughs> no, so I went there. So my first quarterback meeting, I'm there, and now I think I am a cat's meow, right? I'm, right. I'm in all I'm state in. high school. Oh uh, yeah, I'm in. I broke every record. I'm okay. the man, right? right. So I drop all my college. drop all my pre med courses. Okay. Biology, chemistry. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to the pros. Yeah. You kidding? You know, I didn't realize I was just short and slow. Uh -huh. Okay, at the time. So I realized that later. Right. So my junior year, I'm playing. Let's see, I'm playing Widener. I'm playing Widener College, and step in a hole, break my ankle. Minute and forty left. In but the not game. like Joe Feisman. No, no. Okay. Minute and forty left in the game. We're down 10-7. Uh, okay. Driving down about thirty yard line, heading into the end zone, and. I stepped in this hole. Like a gopher hole or what? Yeah, it, who knows, right? Okay. On, on didn't really care. Yeah, grass fields. We didn't have uh, yeah. uh, right. artificial back then, so we didn't do a regular deal. And so they, they take me over the sideline, call timeout. I do the injury thing. They make a cast out of this this uh, tape on my leg because i got to go back in. We're, we we got to get this touchdown. Oh. We're going to beat the number five team in the country, right? Wow. So I, I – they go back in, rolling out again, and I throw this pass, and I dump it off to a typical, typical fullback named Rockovich. <laughs> True story. I don't make this stuff up, right? So I throw it to 444. So I throw it to Rock, like what, 10 yard pass? Yeah, something? and rolling out. Oh, it was, we had to just get first down. Okay. Six yards. Okay. Right? Hit him right in. Bam! Ball pops up. Uh, you got Lose the game. game right? Oh. Lose the game. This, that was it. That was it's one of those down. things you never forget. Never right? forget that. It hit right. I mean, that 44 hit him right in the middle of the 44. Right. Probably shouldn't have hit him right in the 44. Probably should have yeah, put it out right. here or something. Yeah, right. think about Because he's that, that big, was... you know, Rockovich, right? So he was uh, thinking about running. Yeah. Probably right. He was, he was already. In the I end have zone. the ball. Yeah. I already have the ball. He was, he was in the end zone. Right? Uh, so so then how does I, he feel? 
What's that? How does he now feel psychologically, would you imagine? Thinks about it every day? I, I, I bet he, he thinks about it a little bit. He's got a little thicker than oh, Alex, so I'm just sure he might have forgot. <laughs> Hopefully he did. <laughs> We're all a little thicker than Alex. So uh, that night, so we get after the game, that night, um, you know, we all go to the party, right? We all go to the party. Did you have ice on it or anything? Yeah, we did. Initially, we did, right? But, you know, in, in high school or in college, you know, we didn't have uh, pain medicine. Oh. You know, you couldn't get a, a pain pill. Yeah. So you would go have a couple of beers with your sure. buddies, right? If you like her, she had a color. Well, guess what? That wears off around midnight, <laughs> right? So midnight, I wake up, and I'm just like, looking at my ankle. It's this, this big. Looking at it, I'm thinking, man, maybe. So, I did you think it was sprained? I did. You know, I was okay. just twisting my ankle before, right? We've always twisted my ankle. I'm thinking, there's, it doesn't look right. There's, there, there's something. And I tried to get up and go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay, yeah. we got a problem here. Yeah. All right. So, I sit back down. Uh -huh. And uh, there was this gal in uh, college. Her name was Michelle Ryan. And I wanted her to be my girlfriend. Right? Okay. So, I called her at midnight. And I said, can, I you, take, can you take me down to the, the <laughs> hospital? She's like, yeah, <laughs> yes. So she comes rushing up to the house. She grabs me and uh, takes me down to the to the hospital. Well, since I was the town quarterback, the the orthopedic surgeon on call, his name was Doug Tase. Okay. So yeah, so he he comes in at like one o'clock in the morning. Now, does anybody from the school know any no. coach? No, no, okay, no, no. I'm, I'm on my own here. But St. Joe's Hospital, Reagan Hospital. He comes in. And turns out we kind of hit it off, you know. And he's just telling me all about his job and everything else. So I said to him, I said, "Can I, you know, can I come down to your office and you know see what you do and spend some time with you?" He said, "Sure, are you kidding? Sure, well, I'm great, right?" So I go down to his office. I end up going to surgery with him, and this the, obviously no problem with blood. No, smell. well, that's why I went to surgery. I'm like, I had to go to surgery oh. to find out. Can I do this, right? I'm, can I cut people open? Families. Right, like, can I cut people open? Like. Is this really going to happen? You know what I mean? So I go down to the, to the OR, and to this day, the surgeon that was doing it was his partner. He was doing a hip replacement. Okay. And he cuts the ball of the hip off. Okay. So, you know, cuts it up. This is electric saw. And tosses it to me. And you reflam, catch the ball of somebody's hip, right? And to this is it light? Yeah, it's real light, yeah, right. And to this day, I do the same thing to the medical students. I cut the ball off and toss it to him. Like, I mean, you're talking 30 years later. Yeah. I mean, Do it's, you think uh, that somebody did that to him? I probably. Probably. That's how I guess. It goes back several So years. now I realize I'm not playing professional football. <laughs> like <laughs> right after that? No, way before that. Oh, I oh. so, I, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to do four years of pre med in two because my knucklehead, right? Remember, right. I told you yeah, little yeah. Knock, right? The well, knucklehead has dropped. Two years of courses. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta go back and I gotta get these two years back. So I start going around the clock, like around them all year long. So when I'm back in Jersey, I'm going to St. Joe's in Philly. When I'm in school, I'm doing it. You know, I'm just taking this huge workload because you just gotta get done in four years. Gotta that's get it. Done. Four years is in the scholarship. That's it. Gotta get done. Yeah. And you must have done well. We did. We did. It turned out pretty good, you know. And then I got accepted to medical school. And where was that? In Jersey. Okay. In Jersey State School. And so come finish but college. They didn't have a football team. No, they didn't. Yeah. Come finish college. I thought to myself, I got it. There's no way I can jump because I just worked myself silly yeah. over two years. Right. I got to get a break here. Yeah. Right? Okay. So I took a break. For how long? A year. Okay. A break. And I what did you what did you do? I went and became a pharmaceutical rep. Oh, okay. <laughs> in South Philly. So that was great training for what in you do In South now. Philly, right? So last name ends in a vowel. In South Philadelphia, calling on doctors. Yeah, that went pretty good. <laughs> I didn't have to work that much and to be successful, right? Right. You know, just you could hear them yelling, my Cravetti, there's a Cravetti out there. Get him in here. You know, the, doc, the, the docs, you'd walk down, they, they were in row homes, right? Hit five row homes, sell a bunch of stuff, you go hang out, right? Oh. So fortunately, at the end of that year, now I got five buddies. We have a place in Manioc, West Philadelphia, right? Okay. With Not cool, southwest. Cool hit. So how area. far is that from South Philadelphia? Up to 20 minutes. Okay. It'd be like Summerland, Anderson. Okay, guys. Nice. Okay. So my buddies, we have this house. Then I got a house over in Jersey because I need a responsible home. So okay. I got five buddies in Manioc. Then I need like 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 a responsible place right. to live. So I have my own place with yeah. another buddy over in Jersey. So 
I go to a, a national sales meeting, right, and uh, all the reps from the country there were brand new, brand like okay. we just started two weeks ago, and I see this girl and I'm like, now I'm engaged <laughs> to the gal who took me to the hospital. Okay. Okay. Engaged. So that's where engaged. four years later. Engaged. Right? Right. Yeah. So I'm engaged to her and I'm two like, wow, well, this is you know, and I see this gal and I'm like, okay. Who is this person? Right? You know, I get myself all <laughs> crazy, right? So sure enough, that, she's from Texas. This is the Texas okay. girl, right? So I look at, I see her, I'm like, oh. So my she God. was at this orientation thing too, or what? Yeah, there's okay. her. She was to start. So she's a rep on an island in the south of Texas, right? Yeah, okay. in an island, a little called Mustang Island. Oh. All right, Port Aransas, okay. Texas. Okay. We're off the coast of Corpus Christi, South of uh, okay. Houston. Okay. So she's a rep down there, and I'm a rep in South Philly. Couldn't be more opposite. Right. Could not be more opposite. She's in this cool, laid-back ocean island fishing yeah. town. I'm on the streets of South Philly. <laughs> right. So. Oh, wait. Now is Rocky from South Philly? Uh, Rockovich. No, Rocky. Oh, Rocky oh. Balboa. Of, of course he's from South Philly. Okay, got it. Okay. Come on. So, so that's what. <laughs> So that's like Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like yeah. I rub those steps on the a museum. Every steps. time you go oh, out. Oh, every time. Okay. You know, you know, your buddies go out, stop at the Irish pub, everybody's running those steps. <laughs> everybody's at the top with their hands up, running the steps of the obviously everybody is. Okay. It's really cool, actually. You gotta do that one time. Okay, right? I will. Still. So now back to So I meet this gal, right? And I'm thinking Wow, you know, just totally head of who knows. Okay, I'm crazy. You can look at Sherry's door. Yeah, yeah. So I just, just fall head over heels for this gal, right? As soon as I see her. And I was like, this is crazy. How do I get out of my engagement? Well, no, and I come home from the meeting. On the ride down, I tell my fiance, who I love to this day, is a wonderful person. I'm like, I, I, I can't marry you. She's like, what are you talking about? And I said, I, I, I just can't marry you. I mean, I love you, but I can't marry you. She's like, okay, this is bizarre. What just happened, right? You know, yeah. what crazy. And I said, I don't know. I didn't even know that my current wife. I didn't even know her phone number. I mean, nothing about the gal. Yeah. I just knew I wasn't going to marry this gal. So right? this is love at first sight. Love at first sight. So we go back to a meeting about a month later. We go to Nashville, Tennessee, okay. at the Grand Old Opry Hotel. Okay. And somehow we, a thousand people there. Hoffman LaRoche, pharmaceutical company, yeah, yeah. we run into each other. Right? It's wow. a fake kind of deal, right? So a couple of nights go by and we steal the deal. You know, we're, we're going to be, you know, I like you, you like me kind of thing. Yeah. We'll hang You're out. there, I'm up yeah. there. We're, we'll hang out. We'll figure it out. Right. So she goes home and uh, I go home. Don't even have her number, nothing. Right? <laughs> Somehow she calls my house at like 2 in the morning. This is before cell phones, right? Yeah, right. So I'm like, oh, who is this? So it's Karen, you know, it's that, that, that. So we talk all night, right? Yeah. And so it's on. So as soon as she said it's Karen, it's on. Yeah, okay. it's on. Yeah, wow. I'm wide awake. I'm like, oh, oh my God, it's Karen. Oh my God, it's Karen. Right? So now, were you in the the crash pad with your pals or were you in your other place? I was in my responsible home. Okay, good. Okay. My responsible home. Yeah, crash pad, there's no telephone. Yeah. I, don't think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the crash pad had a telephone. So we we're, we're over there, um, and I can remember, you know, talk to her, and then we start this long distance thing. So, but the good news was we had to go to training in New York about every uh -huh. month or two months. Oh, wow. So we kind of saw each other a lot. And then there was a food store uh, called Pathmark. Okay. okay, Pathmark food stores, right? So all my buddies, I told them, listen, everybody shops at Pathmark because if you got enough uh, miles, they, they turned the dollars into miles, Midway Airlines. <laughs> now I'm going back. Then I've been with her 27 years, uh -huh. so I'm going back 27 years now. Midway Airlines. If you got enough miles, you got free flights. Okay. So I would go it's through kind Chicago. Of like Southwest Airlines. It's just like Southwest, right? Yeah. So I would get all, and you had, it was all the groceries that you bought. So oh. I had all my buddies shopping at Pathmark. And they're like, Mike, I got to drive a half hour to shop at Pathmark. I'm like, you're shopping at Pathmark. <laughs> okay. So I had literally free flights for a year. So nine months, fast forward nine months, so I'll get too winded yeah. on this. But nine months later, that school calls me, the medical school calls me, and you'll love this. Talk about Italian American, right? The dean of students was Jim Judice. Wow. We call him the Juice. Right? <laughs> so the Juice calls me on the phone, and he says, "I asked Jim Judice." Now I had started a personal training business, so I was oh. actually training him. 
I was and training. This is before personal training, really? Way right before. It? Yeah. And it, and it happened because I was training the Sixers, oh. the Flyers. Oh. They were all lived in Cherry Hill. So How this, did that come about? No idea. I was in the gym one day. I was in there and I was in the gym. I went to the gym every day. It was okay. at Valley. Played college football. Ran into the guys and looking hard. They're like, hey, listen, can we work out with you? And turned into like this $60 an hour deal for these professional athletes, yeah. right? I'm like, this is awesome. Sure, I'll work out with you at five you know, every day, right? Because my pharmaceutical job is a half a day job. Don't tell me that. I would have said that. I would have said that. But uh, so anyway, we hung out and, and, and did all this. So Juice from the medical school is. Yeah. Uh, He's the guy that calls me and says, "Listen, Mike, you got to come to school this year. I postponed it the year for oh, you already. Got it. You got to come so to you school. So you got accepted right out of college. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, you got to go to school. And I said, "All right, do so. I'll come to school." So I call Karen. I'm like, "Um, well, I got to go uh, to medical school." She's like, "Medical school? When?" I'm like, "Well, three weeks." She's like, "What are you talking about? You're going to medical school in three weeks?" I'm like, "Yeah, go to medical school." So sure enough, so she's like, okay, well, good luck. Have a great life. I'm like, what, 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 what? <laughs> well, wait a second. So I jump on one of the Midway Airlines flights, you know, like planes, trains, and automobiles. Sure, I get down to Corpus Christi, Texas, on the island, over the ferry, and I had to pout for like three days. Oh, pout. Like, pout, pout. Lip, whole, whole <laughs> deal. Three days, you know. Have you met her parents Lip, by now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They liked you, obviously. No. They didn't. No, no. They didn't. You weren't in Texas. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, Jersey boys don't know Texas, Texas girls. Yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a bad situation. So that didn't help. Yeah, they, they didn't have. Yeah. Them, they didn't have. It took about twenty. Let's see, it's twenty seven. It took about twenty six and a half years <laughs> for them to like me. So I think, I think it just happened last week. Okay. That they actually kind of like me. So I go down and pout. So she, now she says, after all the pouting, I'll move to New Jersey. I'm like, you're gonna do what? You're gonna do huh? You're gonna come to Jersey? Right. So now, mind you, her first trip to Jersey, right? I pick her up the airport. We stop in South Philly uh, at uh, 20th and Jackson. It's uh, Nick's Roast Beef. Okay. Stop for lunch. Famous place. Yeah. Um, not so. Oh. Just my hole in the wall. Okay. Awesome. Your favorite place. Go to yeah, like Nick's go. Roast Beef. I mean, everybody goes to Nick's for lunch, you know. And so we, we double park. That freaked her out, right? We double park. She says, well, how are the people next to you going to get out? I said, Karen, when they want to leave, they'll just come into the bar and yell, hey, uh -huh. you with the red car, I got to get out. And they'll go out with the car. Okay. And it's that easy. She, she said, the concept, it's not, she's not getting the whole concept. So we walk in to Nick's, right? It's kind of a smoke-filled little spot. The guy behind the, the make is cutting the beef. Yeah. Right? He's got the cigarette hanging out, <laughs> cutting the beef. She's like, what are we doing here? I'm like, just trust me on this. <laughs> trust me on this. So I quickly get her a beer. So we gotta get a beer because yeah. this one this will ease that tension, right? It's our first trip to my like my spot, right? Okay. So we go in there and so she starts to order. <laughs> she goes, she's oh, I'm gonna have recipe, and I'm gonna have lettuce and some onions and I'm gonna have some peppers. And I said, Karen, um, you want cheese or no cheese? <laughs> she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, all that other stuff. It's cheese or no cheese. Oh. She says, so you don't get anything else with it. So this you is the fries. She gets. Right? This, is that no, no, it's actually roast beef. There's a big is roast beef. cut roast beef. Okay. And he slices it up, and it's just amazing. And that's how they eat it back. Oh, it's amazing, right? So. And we, what was her? So she's like, okay, I'll have cheese. I'm like, two combos. <laughs> and, you know, there's a line of people. And so he gives you the kind of those. And like, wet or dry? I'm like, I make them wet, which means there's a little extra sauce on there. She's, so I hand her this, <laughs> this plate with this brown gravy laden sandwich, right? And she's like, I'm, I'm gonna eat this. I'm in I'm in a place. You know, the ceiling's only eight foot six, right? Smoking oh, on the top half. Right. She's got this brown something in her hand and she's just and, not and I'm sure looking over there she table. Yes. I'm like, come on, let's go sit over here. <laughs> so we sit down, we proceed to eat two more. Wow. Two more. She goes crazy over this deal. And coming from Texas, she's a uh, they, She knows, yeah, yeah. You know, and I had been down there at the house for a barbecue. You never seen barbecue until you seen barbecue in South Texas. The barbecue is pulled by a pickup truck. Wow. Into the front yard. <laughs> the barbecue is pulled by a pickup truck on the. It has a, a trailer hitch on the barbecue. 
and I wheel up, you know, here's this Jersey kid. Yeah. I'm on some coast island, you know, with all these big old cowboy hats. And, you know, her dad picks me up. He's got light, Miller Light in his hand. I'm like, where am I? Right. I'm a little nervous here. I'm in a different place. I'm a little this nervous here, right? Not in Jersey. Yeah. Anymore. yeah, not in Jersey anymore. So she came up and I just blew her mind. Oh. So I sealed the deal because the Nick's roast beef helped me seal the deal. She, now she's in love with Philadelphia. We go outside. You know, I don't know if you how many people you know from back there, but they're I mean, just the most wonderful people in the world. South Philadelphia is just like going to anybody's house all the time. I, you know, I don't know people from there, but everybody I know who's from there talks the same way about it that you do. Yeah, it, you know, get such a the East Coast gets such a bad rap, and it was so funny because I'm in New York last weekend for Karen's 50th birthday. Oh. That's our city. Yeah. That's where we go. Okay. We New York, we try and go two, three times a year, and that's our city, right? Oh. Yeah, I, even for anniversaries, everything, I'll tell her, hey, you want to go to Rome, you want to Paris? Where? Yeah, no. She's like, New York City. <laughs> we're staying in the city, Manhattan, We're gonna be, and we do it every time. Wow. You get out, you just walk down the street. You can be in Manhattan 20 minutes and you got 10 friends. I mean, they are the nicest people you've ever met. When you walk down the street and someone's like, oh, hi, good morning. My wife sits down for Mother's Day. You sit six inches from each other yeah. at restaurants. Okay. Six yeah. inches from each other. You, my wife sits down across from me, Karen, and the guy next to her says, oh, happy Mother's Day. Wow. The family next to the kids are like, oh, hi. Next to, I mean, we're all having breakfast together in like eight minutes. You know, oh. it's, it's, it's the way it's supposed to be, right? So, so people are wonderful back there. Oh, that, that's, uh, I haven't heard that before. Awesome. You just go there. Now, would it be the same thing for me, or would it be that same exact thing? Because I grew up in a different environment, people would sense. What you would like, there's no personal space back there. Okay. So that's the only thing you won't like. There's no. Just you're walking yeah, down, people there's are bumping no, into you. Yeah, there's no. In fact, just if, ignore it. Right? If you sit on the sidewalk and you watch an intersection, okay. it's a real treat. Somehow, these people do not kill each other. <laughs> the cars, motorcycles, bicycles, and pedestrians. Somehow have this harmony, and somehow they do, nobody runs anybody over, and you're just sitting there going, "Ooh, you're moving around." Oh, that, oh, that, oh, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> that guy just goes right past somebody on a bicycle. It's like sitting on a, a piazza in Rome, uh -huh. yeah, with, with those little Vespas. Sure, yeah, he, a swarm of Vespas. I can't, I can't watch it. Yeah, with smart, uh, smart cars and Vespas. I can't, I can't, I cannot look up when I'm eating. Yeah. Lunch and, and look because I just think every time somebody's going to kill somebody. Yeah. You know, and they never, and they miss each other. That's how it is in New York. So no personal space, but even when you're walking down the sidewalk, you're walking perfectly. Somehow you just miss the person. Next so what to is the thing? Don't think about what they're doing. Just do your thing. And yeah, uh, they're current, like you're coming at each other at an intersection, right? You, you know, you've got 50 people and 50 people, and you're coming, right. and somehow nobody runs into anybody. It's unbelievable. It just and like you're just still talking like, on your phone, oh, right? People, it's not like a conscious. People texting. Where do I go? Okay, across, yeah. Where do I like scan? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not conscious at all. It's so amazing. Huh. And that happens anywhere between 11 o'clock in the morning and 2 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Same crowd. Wow. Like we're walking home. Everybody thinks you know, you're going to get mugged in New York, right? Yeah. Karen and I are walking home 2 o'clock in the morning because it's like 11 o'clock for us. Yeah, right. Right. right so sure. we're coming out of dinner. Yeah. Then we stopped at a little a little bar on the way home, a little wine bar. Yeah. So we're walking home at two in the morning. You, there's no worry about uh, being mugged yeah. or you know we're just we're walking and hold hands, just walking right through the streets of New York. But so was really a thousand other people yeah. at that two o'clock in the morning, right? So amazing. let me go off topic for one go. second. Advil, good or bad? Advil. I, I mean, I, uh, ibuprofen. Good or bad for what? To take to take. It's awesome. Okay. I, I, have, I have my doctor says it should be banned. Well, your doctor's worried about your kidneys. Okay. He's worried about your blood pressure. Okay. See, I'm a bone guy. Okay. okay. I'm worried about your joint hurt. Okay. okay. This is how we keep you out of surgery with a little Advil. Okay. You know, you know, you twist your hands. Dentists like Advil too. They they do. Yeah. 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 This is how we treat pain without narcotics. Okay. I don't like narcotics. I see. Yeah. It's okay. people crazy. Okay. So, but Advil, you throw as long as you don't abuse it. You know, two, four, six hundred milligrams, three or four times a day. You could have up to oh. twenty-four hundred milligrams a day. Safe. Can you imagine it? Oh, wow. Three eight hundred milligram oh. tablets. That's safe, but you can't do it every day because it will get your kidneys. I read somewhere that uh, uh, ibuprofen. Some people think it's like the next aspirin that it just has really a lot of good health benefits. 
I don't know. Okay. It, it was a good it's such it's... a bad rap on uh, blood pressure and kidneys. Okay. You know what I mean? It's really your heart and kidneys. So now what's worse, acetaminophen or ibuprofen? Oh, or... for you? I oh. Well, Tylenol got a bad rap because of livers, the problem okay. with liver. And like but, if you drink, you can't drink. Liver. Right. But, but, I mean, you're talking high doses. Okay. I mean, these so are... Don't even worry about it. You can have 4,000 milligrams of Tylenol in it. Okay. Okay, 4,000. Yeah. That's eight tabs That's a lot. Eight, 500 milligram tabs a day, safely. So, I mean... Pine, and drinking or no drinking? Well, you shouldn't drink it with uh, any yeah. medication, right? So, to say, but if you're yeah, having 4, a glass of, glass of wine with a cup of Tylenol, really? I mean, okay. this is pretty safe. Okay. Right. I'm so, not going to kill over with a glass of wine with a cup of Tylenol. <laughs> I'm not going to. Okay, so you, uh, okay, so let's just go to what brought you here, what brought you out here. Okay, yeah, some more, some more wife stories, like Karen <laughs> stories. So at the time, I finished my training, and I got five job offers. Okay, Texas. And in, were you going to be in orthopedic surgery? Yes, no, I'm already done. So when you uh, started, I am an orthopedic surgeon. Okay. But I mean, um, when you went into medical school, that's yes. where you're going to, that's, that's what all you're going to do. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I, the juice, I told you about the juice, yeah. made me a critical care doctor for six months because one of his residents quit. Oh. I'm like, juice, orthopedic guys don't do critical care. <laughs> okay, we're, 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 we're nuts and bolts guys, right? Okay. He's like, oh, you're my new intensive uh, uh, care unit um, doctor. I'm like, no, juice, you don't understand. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a carpenter. Like, I, I, this is people I'm die. Like, I don't think like, people die there. there. Like, I, I can't go to the ICU. That's where people die. He's, yep, you're in charge. Wow. And puts me in this little hospital. I'm like, okay, well, who's my go-to guy? Like, who's watching me? He goes, I'm nobody. Wow. I'm like, no juice. Listen, I love you. And you know you love me. But I, I am your trainer, your personal trainer. I will hurt you. Okay? <laughs> and there will be consequences. I ended up being an ICU doctor. Wow. Yes, yeah, so I finished. And that probably turned out to be a good experience in life. In, especially today. Like, my, one of my patients gets sick. You know, I'm not just a nuts and bolts guy, right? So, you know, got to... And you do the surgery, most of them here or all of them here? In, in my office? Yeah. Uh, no, I do half of them here. Half. Half down the hospital, yeah. Okay. So. so anything you can do here, you do here? Yeah, anything. Okay. I can do I have six people downstairs now that I... Or actually three or four, and I did a hip and knee replacements one yesterday. Just downstairs in the office. It's pretty cool. I have wow. these six hotel rooms, five yeah, star rooms. Yeah, so is this like Nip Tuck? This is... All, yeah, you should have? see this... You should see these people. It'll be up. I did a, hip a couple of hip replacements. They'll walk up here and get their x-ray. It's amazing. Yeah, it's just so much better when it's all in house. So cool, right? This whole building is 40,000 feet, physical therapy. People stay overnight. I got I got a heart center. I got an internal medicine center, physical therapy. Got I got a fight gym. I got a cafe downstairs. <laughs> uh, yeah, this place is the bomb. This is it. And I built this from scratch. Wow. So this is my baby. Yeah. And what gave you the idea? Um, gave me the idea you know, I have an issue with sitting still, like like a really big issue with sitting like still. Like an interview like this. Yeah, <laughs> a real issue with getting, yeah, well, as long as my mouth is fine. Oh, okay. okay, something's got to be Yeah, I got to keep my hands, as long as nobody's holding my hands and my mouth's allowed to be okay. open, I'm okay. okay. So I just, entrepreneurial thinking, I got to start building for my future, got three kids, yeah. college, you know, the whole thing. Right. So I got to be a little bit ready. Yeah. So it was awesome. We've it. It's been amazing. So let me finish the story. Yeah. I got here. Yeah. I got a few more minutes. Yeah. Uh, let me finish the story. So I got five job offers. One of them is with the Houston Astros. I'm going to be their team doctor. Wow. No, that's the hospital that my wife was born in. Okay. It's the first time her family actually called me Mike as oh. opposed to Yankee. <laughs> first time ever. They called me because I was moving uh -huh. to Houston. Sure. So Karen, we come to Las Vegas. She says, this is where we're living. I said, no, Karen. She says, I moved to New Jersey for you. Yeah. We're going, we're living in Las Vegas. I can't, people don't live here. I, I, I've never even been this far west. Like, people do not live in Las Vegas. They just go there. And I think they live in the Bellagio if they do, right? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we're going we're gonna to move to Vegas. So try telling your parents who have probably never even been west of Philadelphia <laughs> that we're going to live in Las Vegas. And by the way, we're going to take your grandchildren. Okay. Yeah, and everybody, of course, knows of Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. yeah it, and right, started type. Sure enough, she wins. She picks. So you flew in, drove in first time? Uh, drove in. And 
did you hate it at first sight or did you? Not a chance. You loved it. It was so exciting, so awesome. Everything was so new. Now, when you came in, did you come in through the 15 or through? Came up through Wittenberg. You must have gone through. uh, Las Cruces, uh, the 10. Las yeah. Cruces, up to 10, okay. Whitmer Yeah, up 90, 93, okay. all the way come, yeah, come over the dam. So then you see Las Vegas. And we're just here. like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, we got this big U-Haul with the, the car on the back, and we got two screaming kids and a dog, and what are we doing? So this was really, what we're committed, are we're really doing? doing, you know what I mean? And sure enough, it ended up being... How long ago was that? 17 years ago. Okay, yeah. so things are a lot different. Oh, amazing. Yeah, such a wonderful. I mean, this is my home. This is where I live. This is my home. I'm so proud of it, and proud to be here. And you know, my friends back east are now jealous, of course, because they want to come. So when they come again. visit, they're just like, I, I didn't know this existed. You know, we live in a country club. We're like little yuppies. We, <laughs> we live in a country club. We, you know, our kids get on their bikes in the morning and yeah. come back at night, and they're all grown up now. But they did for ten years. Yeah, you know, we built a built a beautiful home and. The things you can have here are so different than what you know, our view is of the city, the yeah. backyard. It's, it's beautiful. How is uh, the state of medicine here? Sometimes it gets a bad rap, but it, is, is that, well, what is the state of medicine? You know, it, it's a credibility issue, okay. right? The state of medicine is fantastic, right? Like I, mean, I know the, the maybe, Rubo Center, Cleveland Clinic. Right. I, mean, I mean, look at the Rubo Center, right? You have the Cleveland Clinic, cutting edge neurologic research being done in Las Vegas. There's cancer research being done in Las Vegas. I built the first outpatient total joint program in the country Wow! here in in my building. And you know, that's kind of a part of the history of Las Vegas is things get done here that don't get done anywhere in the world. Because you can can affect things. You know, I can call the mayor. Exactly. I have town relationships back in 05 or 06. The, the town very graciously made me their person Henderson. of the year, right? Henderson, yeah. the person of the year. Since, the, since no, then, people are, you can get to people. Right, you can, even the governor. You can get to the governor. Everybody. I growing up in California, not accessible. My hunch is where you grew up, pretty much not accessible. I mean, when I'm 65, yeah. you know, not 40. Yeah. You're making a difference, right? You know, yeah. making a, we made it. We were making a difference at 38. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that in Philly. Yeah. 65. I might get a year from somebody, right? But not with 38. Right. Doctor, I'm conscious to your phone going off and the amount of time we spent. <laughs> Sorry. So this about was that. great. I have one last question. Yes, sir. Sauce or gravy? Sauce. Can you grow up with sauce? Sauce. Not gravy. Not gravy. Okay. The sauce. It's cooking the sauce. And then the best part about the sauce was, of course, the whole house smelled like it. you could smell when you hit the, hit the driveway, right? Yeah. So the whole house smelled like it. My mom always left a loaf of bread. Uh, always left a because it sat there for what, eight hours? Yeah. Not yeah. sure long time. Yeah. Right? So left a loaf of bread there. Not just to, 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 to see how it's going. And there were four going. boys, my dad and three brothers, right? So, so when it's ready, it's uh, going. We're, we're, you, that <laughs> loaf of bread. Last about ten minutes. <laughs> the entire loaf is gone. We haven't even. And then you know, mom's like, ah, you know, are we gonna have enough? The pot is like this big. Are we gonna have enough for dinner? <laughs> like, mom, we have enough for the next six months. Yeah. You know, then of course she puts them in the Tupperware and right. then stacks them in the fridge. I'm like, I think you had enough, mom. Yeah. I think you had enough. Work. I think we did okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're very welcome. Thank you for today. Really great.